Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Charlie Bennett makes history by becoming the first Israeli premier to make an official state visit to the United Arab Emirates. The United Kingdom warns the Islamic Republic of Iran, asserting that nuclear talks in Vienna constitute a final chance to revive the 2015 nuclear deal. U.S. CENTCOM Commander General Kenneth McKenzie threatens Iran as the United States confirms its intention to withdraw all combat units from Iraq. Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett made history last night when he became the first Israeli Premier to make an official state visit to the United Arab Emirates. Before boarding his plane in Ben Gurion International Airport, the Israeli leader proclaimed relations between Jerusalem and the Emirates to be, at the beginning, of an extraordinary partnership. I'm about to depart to the United Arab Emirates in the first ever official visit of an Israeli Prime Minister. I'll be meeting with Crown Prince Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed. We're going to be discussing ways to further our cooperation in a number of fields, especially strengthening our economic and commercial ties. In just one year since normalizing our relationship, we've already seen the extraordinary potential of the Israel-UAE partnership. And this is just the beginning. While bolstering of relations between the two nations was declaratively the core focus of respective meetings in Abu Dhabi, senior Israeli officials confirmed that Prime Minister Bennett seized the opportunity to present his host with new intelligence information about the deployment of Iranian proxy militias and unmanned aerial system units throughout relevant locations in the volatile region, information that was recently obtained by Israeli intelligence agencies. The Israeli officials further noted that Bennett's decision to inform the Emirati Crown Prince Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan after the latter's brother, UAE National Security Advisor Sheikh Tahnoun bin Zayed Al Nahyan, traveled to Iran last week for a rare visit, during which he met with his Iranian counterpart Ali Shamhani and President Ibrahim Raisi, respectively. Discussions reportedly involved a possible expansion of bilateral ties, among others, a point of evident concern for Israel's security establishment. Nevertheless, a senior Israeli official told TV7 that Israel remains clear-eyed about the Emirati reasoning behind its overt dialogue with the Ayatollah regime, mentioning a tweet that was published by senior diplomatic advisor to the UAE leader, who highlighted, quote, Sheikh Tahnoun bin Zayed's visit to Tehran comes as a continuation of the UAE's efforts aimed at strengthening bridges of communication and cooperation in the region and in a manner that serves the national interest. He further asserted that the UAE seeks to enhance regional stability and prosperity by developing positive relations through dialogue, building on common ground and managing divergent visions. In other yet related news, at a time when world powers are seeking to assess whether Iran is genuine over possibly reviving the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, or JCPOA, which is the technical term for the 2015 nuclear agreement, Tehran's top nuclear negotiator Ali Bagheri Khani is seemingly infuriated by staunch European obstinance over Iranian proposals which London, Berlin and Paris refer to as unrealistic. Speaking to Iran's regime-run press TV, Kani sought to engage in a so-called blame game by accusing the European parties to the deal over failing to come up with any initiatives to resolve differences over the removal of U.S. sanctions on Iran. Separately, Russian ambassador to Vienna Mikhail Ulyanov insisted following a meeting of the P5 plus 1, including Russia, China, France, the United States, Britain plus Germany, that the respective negotiators managed to reconcile the new Iranian ideas while stressing further that the work will continue on the basis of the previous drafts. However, during a press conference at a G7 foreign ministerial meeting in Liverpool, British Foreign Secretary Liz Truss asserted that the chance for the Islamic Republic of Iran to show its seriousness was running out of time. This is the last chance for Iran 
to come to the negotiating table with a serious resolution to this issue, which has to be agreeing the terms of the JCPOA. This is the last chance. And it is vital uh, that they do so. We will not allow Iran to acquire a nuclear weapon. And it is vital that they come to the table and are serious about the negotiations. Meanwhile in Washington, Pentagon Press Secretary John Kirby sought to clarify a statement made by U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin after asked whether one of the referred to options under consideration, if the talks with Iran fail, includes a military engagement. Well, what the Secretary said was that President Biden has said uh, that he wants to see diplomacy succeed and, and should it uh, fail, he's open to consider other options. There's lots of options uh, available to the commander-in-chief, to the president, um, and uh, I'm not going to speculate one way or another about what they might be. Uh, I would simply say, as I've said before, we have a robust presence in the region, we have national security interests in the region, uh, and the secretary's job is to defend those national security interests, so we're going to continue to do that. Pressed further on the issue, Kirby re-emphasized that while the Pentagon provides President Joe Biden with tangible options, the American head of state remains convinced that there remains room for diplomacy. Look, this institution exists to provide the president options uh, across all manner of contingencies, Sylvia. I'm not going to speculate about where this is going to go. We still believe there's room for diplomacy. We still believe that... Um, that that's the best path forward, um, and uh, and that's what that's what this administration is focused on is getting back into the JCPOA and preventing Iran from being able to achieve that nuclear capability. Kirby was further asked about a tweet which Israeli Defense Minister Benny Gantz published after his meeting with his American counterpart, in which he noted that shared strategic challenges with an emphasis on the Iranian nuclear threat were being reviewed alongside the need to deepen U.S.-Israel dialogue and cooperation, including on topics of military readiness to stop and face Iran's regional aggression. Military readiness, he was speaking about vis-a-vis -vis Iran. Did it include nuclear facilities as well? Yeah, I'm not going to go into any more detail than, uh, than what the minister went into. He is the minister of defense. Secretary Austin is the secretary of defense. It makes sense that they would talk about military readiness against a shared common threat, uh, and Iran presents a shared common threat to us and to our Israeli partners, to the region. Um, so, of course, they talked about military readiness and, and capabilities. It is important to know that prior to the remarks made by the Pentagon press secretary, CENTCOM commander Kenneth McKenzie asserted in an interview to the Financial Times that the U.S. maintains a very robust range of military options to deter Iran, while further stressing, quote, Iran gravely underestimates us if they believe they're going to be able to continue attacking and causing casualties in Iraq and Syria and still be able to conduct nuclear negotiations with us without any effect. The CENTCOM commander, whose area of responsibility includes the greater Middle East region, Further stressed that the United States retains an ability to reinforce very, very rapidly should it become necessary. It is important to explain that General McKenzie's interview coincided with a joint U.S.-Iraqi announcement over Washington's intention to withdraw American combat service members from Iraq before year's end. <laughs> التي جرت مؤخرا إلى خارج العراق فأن التحالف سينهي بالكامل عملية الانتقال إلى المهام غير القتالية قبل نهاية العام الحالي بموجب ما تم الاتفاق عليه Despite the U.S. withdrawal of roughly 2,500 combatants, Iraq has requested of the U.S.-led coalition to remain in the country in an advisory capacity to help Iraqi forces counter any remnants of the Islamic State. وأكد مستشار الأمن القومي السيد قاسم الأعرجي بأن التعاون سيستمر بين القوات العراقية والتحالف الدولي على صعيد المشورة 
والمساعدة والتمكين وقدم التهنئة للأطراف المجتمعة على قرب الانتهاء الكامل لعملية الانتقال بوقت أبكر مما كان مخطط له أعادت الأطراف المجتمعة التأكيد على أن أفراد التحالف الدولي سيكونون موجودين بدعوة من الحكومة العراقية لتقديم المشورة والمساعدة والتمكين للقوات العراقية في تحقيق أهدافها لحماية الشعب العراقي والقضاء على داعش الإرهابي وأن وجودهم يكون حصرا وفق السيادة العراقية والقوانين والأعراف الدولية Thank you for watching us as part of TV7 Israel's prayer initiative. I would like to encourage you today to join the team and me here in Jerusalem to lift up the United States once again in prayer for its salvation and peace, alongside prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, in addition to our ongoing prayers, of course, for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan wishing you a Shavuot Tovu Mevorach, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.